Hello, I'm Margaret Graziano with Keen Alignment, where we empower people committed to shaping organizations that work. The American Institute of Stress tells us in today's workforce, 80% of workers feel stress on the job. Nearly half say they need help in learning how to manage the stress, and 42% say their coworkers need such help. They also state that job stress is more strongly associated with health complaints than financial or even family problems. An alarming data point is in all of this, most leaders have no idea that their teams, coworkers, or peers feel this way. With that being said, it's no surprise that the missing link to a positive workplace culture focuses around state of mind. In almost every role, management, leadership, individual contributor, or supervisor, we focus on the work that needs to be done. Rarely do we focus on the state of mind of the people doing the work. When people experience stress, pressure, change, upsets, disappointments, all of which are mainstays in today's workforce and in culture, they often deal with their suffering alone. Employees are often not comfortable sharing this information in the workplace, and efforts such as employee assistant programs are greatly underutilized despite the organization's best efforts. People under stress don't talk about it. There's not typically an open forum to talk about stress at work. When we look at the seven levels of individual, group, and organizational effectiveness, the level of fear, hopelessness, and frustration typically is where people reside when they're dealing with upheaval, stress, pressure, and organizational changes. Most of us are so busy focusing on making the donuts that we're unaware that the people we're working with are struggling either in hopelessness, fear, or frustration. Let's talk a little bit about what it means to actually be in hopelessness. It means there's an innate ability to move forward. We're stuck with whatever we have going on with us and we just don't see a positive future. When we're stuck in fear, we're consumed by anxiety. We're consumed with thoughts about what if it fails? Who's gonna get blamed? How am I gonna look? How's this gonna show up? What's the impact on me? How come they're not talking to me about what's happening? The fear conversation metastasizes and takes on a life of itself. When people are in frustration, they're upset about something that they've experienced or with someone, and their focus is on fighting or jockeying for a position against others, not with others. The more angry or frustrated one becomes, the more narrow our focus is. It happens at any of the levels below the power and freedom line, which are frustration, fear, and hopelessness. The level that an individual operates in influences their state of mind. In frustration, we're resisting or defending. In fear, we're either craving something we don't have or pushing something away that we don't want. And in hopelessness, we're just plain stuck. We must first get curious about ourselves and our own state of mind, and then the state of mind of the people in our workforce. We need to slow down take a step back and work with people to understand where they're at physically, mentally, and emotionally. When we're unaware of where we are or where other people are, when people are unaware, it's difficult to adjust and we need to adjust to change our communication so it can get into the state of mind with the people we're talking to. Often when I talk to managers, supervisors, team leads, and executives, they say to me, Margaret, I'm so frustrated. People just don't listen to me. They tell me they're gonna do what I've asked them to do and then they just don't do it and have amnesia when I ask them where it's at. My response to them is, so when you're giving instructions, are you taking the time to check in with people's state of mind? Are you making sure they really heard you and that they're really agreeing to do the work? Do they understand the impact of the work? Do they understand the dependencies and the deadlines? And are they in full agreement to do what they said they're gonna do. So it's all about us slowing our role, checking in with people and making sure they're in the state of mind they need to be in to say yes and mean yes. So why is state of mind the missing link in a positive workplace culture? Because state of mind is where it all begins. When people are engaged in innovation 
or in synchronicity, and even when they're in courage, the body releases chemicals, endorphins, oxytocin, and norepinephrine. These are the same positive chemicals that it takes for people to be receptive, to be present, and to really hear what we're saying. Inspired to learn more? Be sure to register for our Transform Your Culture webcast. We've included the link in today's email. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, your attitude about corporate culture and the people in that culture determines your altitude with workforce engagement and organizational performance. I'm wishing you the best on your success in your cultural transformation journey, and I'll see you tomorrow.